Afternoon, everyone, and welcome to you and a warm welcome for joining our Food for Thought session this afternoon. Um, um, oh, we back there, just about to do some protocols around um, our session this afternoon. If we could make sure our microphones are switched off, it means we don't have any feedback. Um, and it's also preferable to keep your uh, videos off as well. It just helps with the bandwidth of, during our session this afternoon. However, we would ask that you be as present as possible um, and we want to encourage as much active participation in this session. So if you've got any questions for our panellists this afternoon who are going to be sharing an overview of some food education supports, then please pop them into the chat. Um, please use the chat pane for any comments or questions. And if you've got any other links that you would like to, to put in there, then please feel free to use that. If you've got any technical issues, then please let us know through the chat pane, unless the chat function is your technical issue, in which case just raise your hand and one of our speakeasy colleagues will come to your aid. If you lose connection, please don't panic. Just come back in using that joining instructions. And I know that sometimes when you join, um, you might not have the chat function or you might not have sound or you might not be able to see the video uh, or the, the PowerPoint presentation. So just pop yourselves back out and come back in again. It usually works. And please also during the session, um, we would be delighted if you could tweet about your experience um, and just use hashtag SLA online. And just before we get started, I would also really appreciate if those of you that are joining us, if you just pop you who you are, where you're from and uh, what your interest is in, in this session this afternoon. And hopefully we will be able to um, answer any questions you have or certainly be able to direct you in the direction of um, who can support you or where you can find supports moving forward. So thanks again, everybody, for joining our session this afternoon. So what are we here to do for the next 45 minutes? Well, we're going to look at an overview of the Food for Thought Fund, um, the, the, the eight years that it has been um, in existence, um, and a little bit of information about the supports that have been developed in and around that. Um, but the main part of our session this afternoon is really looking at um, our food education supports in Scotland, um, affectionately known as our Good Food Champs. Um, and if they wouldn't mind popping their videos on just now, we'll just do a quick wave. So there we've got Sarah uh, Smith from Wright with us today. We've got Moira Stocker from Food and Drink Federation Scotland. We've got Alex Ritchie from Quality Meat Scotland. And we've got Ian Clooney from Zero Waste Scotland. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And they're going to give us a whistle stop tour of the resources and signposts of support that they have available that could support you with your food education um, in this coming year. So I'll move on just now. Um, uh, first of all, before I, I um, share, I move on to um, the Good Food Champs uh, sharing their overviews, I'm just going to be giving you a quick overview about Food for Thought. So Food for Thought was established 2013-2014 and its aim was to give financial support to develop food and health as a context for learning. And that, that's wider than the experiences and outcomes which are listed under health and well-being. It's the holistic overview of food um, as, a, as a full context for learning. And that fund um, aims to improve your confidence in providing progressive, high quality, skills based learning experiences, which help to embed food education into the ethos of your establishment. And before I go on, what I should do is probably let you know that my name is Lorna Aitken and I'm uh, now a senior education officer in the inclusion, wellbeing and equality team. But prior to that, I was a food and health development officer within Education Scotland for a number of years. So this this subject is very, very close to my heart and was was steeped in the support around uh, progressive food education, in particular for early years and primary and um and supporting BGE progressive food technology. So over the years, this is what it looks like. So we've had a range of, of different amounts which have been allocated 
over the years, uh, basically just depending on what was available um, for, for the programme. Um, so you'll see that different years have got varying amounts um, between phase three and phase six. I'm sorry, phase seven, we had approximately £300,000 um, in each of those phases to, to share across schools in the 32 local authorities across Scotland. And you can see the total um, number of bids that were awarded, which is 914 over those eight uh, phases. And that's covered 1,464 schools because not every bid um, is just for one school or establishment. Quite often it's a cluster or it might have been a local authority. And there's been a whopping over two, 2.3 million pounds has been allocated to schools across Scotland to support food education in that time. And that has impacted on over well over 100,000 learners over that period of time. So the Food for Thought Fund is in its eighth year. So this is where we're at at the moment. Um, 62 bids were awarded uh, this year. Uh, we had a total of 158,000 or just over 158,000 pounds allocated to the schools. Um, and over the course of this year, hopefully we will be able to uh, provide further information and impact in relation to, to the fund in the wide ranging local authorities that have been allocated funding this year. So what else do we have in addition to the fund? So obviously, if you were lucky enough to be allocated funding this year, then Jeanette Smart, who's our Food, and Health, our Food for Thought Development Officer, will already, I am sure, have been in touch with you in relation to your fund um, to provide that support to you in, in spending your, your, um, your funding. Um, but in addition to that, what we also have is a range of other uh, food education resources which you don't need funding to be able to access and use. So we, we absolutely wanted to make sure that we had a, a space and place um, for a range of food education resources that supported schools who um, were not lucky enough to be allocated funding over, over that time. So what's in this space? So this page is on the National Improvement Hub. We've got a range of key documents, some of the policy drivers, which I'll not go into detail um, just now in relation to these, but you'll see that there's a wide range of policies and, and documents which um, are driving food education in Scotland at the moment. And then what we have is a range of learning and teaching resources available to you. And some of these are the res are resources from um, the partners that are here with us today who are going to be presenting shortly to you. And then we've also got some interesting practice. So schools which had already received Food for Thought, we've put, we've put in some examples of what they did with their funding, and that's ranging from early years, primary, secondary, um, so a wide range of different um, sectors and how they've used their funding. But what I want to also do is highlight to you um, this space here. So this one here, the Food Skills for Broad Education. I'm just going to click on this here because this was one that we developed um, a number of years ago and we had um, the support of um, a range of partners um, and um, we were able to create some fantastic videos supporting early years, uh, first level and second level across the, the experiences and outcomes within food technology in that space. I'm just going to click on here so that you can see where to go to find it. So it's in here, the Good Food, Good food Skills Professional Learning Resource. And if I just click on that, it will take me to my Glow login. And I'll just move out of that space and into this one. And so in here, this is going to give you a range of uh, professional learning supports, not just the videos, but professional learning supports that takes you through um, all aspects of food education. So this is going to take me straight to that space. Fingers crossed. And here we have it. So there's the good food skill space within GLOW. Um, and I'd highly recommend that you, uh, if you know you're working on food education this year in your school or setting, this is a really good place to start. Um, so this section here, 
is all about where are we now? There are PowerPoint presentations, there are facilitator notes, there's other uh, documents that you're able to use and access um, to work out where are you now. So basically a kind of self-evaluation process to work out where you're at and what your next steps need to be. Second stage, what about your food hygiene? So if you're going to be using food to education uh, or food to, to enhance learning and teaching, then you need to have a uh, good food hygiene. So in here, what we have in a range of PowerPoints, again, facilitator notes that you will be able to use and access um, to make sure that you have the, the knowledge and skills required uh, around food hygiene to deliver high quality food education in your early years and primary. And then moving on next, getting started. Again, a range of resources in here. What do you need to consider before you start cooking, during food preparation and, and after? And again, we've got PowerPoint presentations, facilitator notes that will take you through this process. So thinking about how are you going to store your, your resources? Um, how are you going to use them? Where are you going to keep them? What resources do you need? Uh, for your particular levels that you're delivering. And then the next section here is uh, looking at progression. So it takes you through the actual progression of skills. So what are the skills at early, at first, second, third and fourth level that we have as part of our progressive food education um, within our curriculum for excellence? And again, this will take you through all of the food skills required at each of those levels. In addition to that, we've got a recipe section, so that includes some recipes for early first and second based on the skills. Um, and then we've got further supports and obviously our link to the National Improvement Hub there as well. So that gives you a whistle stop tour of some of the resources that we have available to support you to deliver high quality food education within your school or setting. But sometimes you can't do that alone. So what I'd like to do just now is hand over to the first of our um, Good Food Champions to share an overview of the work that they do at RET. So I'm going to hand over to Sarah just now, who's going to have her six minutes um, to share an overview of some of the resources and supports available at RET. So thanks, Sarah. Over to you. Thank you, Lorna. Ready, steady, go. Uh, OK, welcome, colleagues, and it's lovely to see you all today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a bit about the resources that RET can provide. Uh, RET is the Royal Highland Education Trust, and we cover food farming and the working countryside. So uh, as well as covering farming, we can also help with uh, careers within the sector. We can help link you to a farm host. We can deliver classroom talks and we are also quite heavily linked into sustainability. So we're linked into the four key goals down the side, particularly life on land and increasingly climate action. So everything that we try and deliver, we try and ensure that it links back to those sustainable goals. Next slide, please. Uh, so what exactly do we offer? Well, we aim to offer unbiased factual information about how food is produced within Scotland. So we can offer farm visits whereby you can take your class out to a farm. We can do this uh, face to face, although this isn't happening at the moment. We're hoping to get it back up running shortly. And we can also do it digitally where we can link your class directly to a farmer in the field. Uh, as well as that, we also offer class talks. So if you're not wanting to come out to a farm or link directly to a farm, we can see if we can send the farmer into the classroom to speak to you. Uh, we also offer food and farming events. These are large events that take place in various locations uh, whereby students rotate around a number of different sets to find out more about food and farming. Uh, if you're an early years teacher, we offer early years boxes. These are available to hire free of charge. They're boxes that contain books, uh, puppets, dressing up stuff to help you teach about food and farming. Uh, and you just need to get in touch if you're interested in hiring one of those. 
We also deliver teacher CLPL. Uh, so we have recently launched the RET eLearning Academy. Uh, now, this is an online portal uh, for primary teachers, whereby we have a number of different units. One of them is the journey of food, uh, and there's a whole heap of learning resources available to access in there as well. It's free to access, uh, and I'll pop the link in the chat when I've finished talking. For the secondary school teachers, we offer Good Food Champions, and I know, uh, I think Moira may be speaking more about that shortly, but that's a portal specifically for secondary teachers around food, STEM and sustainability. This year, we're lucky enough to be running the Year of Beef. Now, the Year of Beef is all about uh, food sustainability, essentially, and over the course of this year, every week we are producing a new resource uh, different weeks will be targeting different uh, curricular levels. We've already released some stuff for early years uh, and this week, uh, today in fact, we've just released some fun based activities that are suitable for early uh, level one as well. So if you're interested in the year of beef and learning for sustainability food resources, it's definitely worth signing up for that. Uh, there's a wakelet and we'll be dropping new content each week into that wakelet. I see in the chat that some people are looking to develop growing within their schools. We do have growing projects which you can engage with as well. So we do give out wheat seeds for planting in school that will be done in springtime next year. And we'll also be giving out seed mixes to schools. Uh, so if you're interested in looking at food sustainability, uh, these seed mixes will be available free of charge as well. We're currently running a 500 soil words competition for primary schools. The deadline for this has just been extended to the end of October. So if you get the opportunity to go outside and do some work with soil, then you can win yourself some line paintings for your school grounds. So there's a lot of activity going on. Uh, next slide, please, Lorna. So if you want to get involved, what do you do? Uh, well, what we do is we divide Scotland into 12 areas and your first step is to find out who your local coordinator is for your particular area. And they're able to assist with things like farm visits and classroom talks. You can do this by visiting our website. Uh, again, I'll pop the link in the chat in a moment. We also have a teacher newsletter. So if you want to keep up to date with what's happening and new resources as they come out, it's well worth signing up to the newsletter to make sure you get that information. Uh, we have a wakelet that's embedded on our website, which enables you to see the newest resources if you happen to be looking for something. On our website, we also have a resource portal. Within this portal are a number of different resources, not just from RET, but from a number of organisations that enable you to teach about food farming in the countryside. And we also deliver quite a comprehensive uh, series of training sessions. We've got one coming up next week uh, on thoughtful eating for secondary school practitioners. And there's a number, they're scheduled for the whole academic year and you can look and see, see if there's something which suits you. So, uh, there's quite a lot of activity going on and quite a lot of things to get engaged with. If anybody has any questions, do pop them in the chat and I'll see if I can answer them. I'll also pop the links that I've just mentioned in there as well. Thanks, Lorna. Thanks, Sarah. I am well impressed. That was perfect timing. Oh, yes. Practice makes perfect. I know. Absolutely. Let's see if everybody else can follow suit. So thanks, Sarah. That's a really comprehensive overview of some of the supports. And now I'm going to hand over to Moira Stalker from Food and Drink Federation Scotland, who's going to give an overview of the supports that they have. So over to you, Moira. Thanks very much, Lauren. And thanks for asking me along today. And Sarah, you're a hard act to follow because me and timing are never, never happy bedfellows. Anyway, lovely to meet you all virtually today. Um, my name is Moira Stalker. I'm Skills Manager with the Food and Drink Federation Scotland. Um, next slide, please, Lorna. Um, for those of you who don't know who we are, um, Food and Drink Federation is actually the trade body for the food manufacturing industry. So on the food supply chain slide, you can see in front of you here, you can see there's primary food production, then food manufacture. So that's like the value add bit of the food chain. And that's the people that we represent. 
Um, we're a UK organisation and we have members of all sizes from small to multinational across the UK. Um, FDS Scotland is the Scottish division of the Food and Drink Federation and we lead on public and corporate affairs and issues affecting manufacturers who either manufacture or sell in Scotland. Um, but we also have a couple of Scottish government funded projects of which my work is one of these. We also have colleagues working um, in reformulation. So they're working with manufacturers to reduce the high sugar, fat, salt content of their foods and basically to, to help um, address the, the, the Scottish dietary goals. Next slide, please, Lorna. So just in case any of you were in any doubt, we've actually been all over the news today. So I'm hoping that some of you have heard of FDF because um, the chief ex executive of the UK organisation and also my own chief executive have been in the news today talking about the CO2 crisis as well. And that has just shone a light on how important the food and drink manufacturing sector is to the economy. The slide here contains a lot of information about how important the industry is and the size and scale of it and the number of people it employs. But I think some of the news stories we've heard recently have helped to highlight that as well. So I'll not dwell on that because we all realise how important food and food education actually is and, and getting the, the right people into the, into the industry really is. Next slide, please, Lorna. So really, I want to focus on the project that I manage and it's called A Future in Food. And the aim of this project is to help young people, educators, career influencers and parents understand what the food and drink industry is all about. And again, I'm talking about food and drink manufacturing. When we talk about food and drink, a lot of people tend to think about catering and hospitality, um, chefing, working in a bar or working in hospitality. Although that's a part of the wider food chain, the bit that we represent is food manufacturing. So we want people to understand the importance of the industry um, the skills and attributes that are required in the industry and the great career opportunities that are on offer in our industry as well. Um, we're highly dependent on um, entrance to the industry, whether they're straight from school, graduates or job changers, having STEM skills. And the industry is changing and probably changing more rapidly as a result of COVID as well. Um, the move is away from lower level unskilled work and there's certainly a move towards much higher level technical skills in the industry and that's a trend that's set to continue. There's a lot more automation happening in the industry, AI and environmental sustainability and the drive towards net zero are driving this demand for technical skills and that doesn't mean that we're getting rid of people, we're actually reusing people and teaching them and training them in higher level skills. We also want to support and promote progression routes into and through the industry as well. So there are apprenticeships, there are foundation apprenticeships, modern apprenticeships and various different routes for people to enter the industry as well and access a really excellent career. And ultimately, we want to help people to make the connection between the food and the plates um, and the people that actually get their food to you every single day. Um, we never we take for granted that we can go to the supermarket and buy whatever we want to eat and it's not going to do us any harm but there's a whole army of people working to achieve that outcome. And that was again highlighted through COVID. Food and drink industry workers went to work every single day. They kept going, they couldn't work from home and they made sure that we had food to eat every single day. So next slide, please, Lorna. Just to um, reiterate, um, STEM skills are in great demand. And again, it's not something that people terribly think about terribly much. The kind of jobs that we're thinking about um, primarily are food scientists, food technologists, so people that ensure the safety of your food or come up with new product ideas or indeed reformulate your food products as well. But we also need a lot of engineers, people involved in quality control, logistics, digital, IT, um, lots and lots of opportunities, marketing, sales, all sorts of opportunities that also lead to opportunities to work abroad and um, work with multinationals or even set up your own business as well. So there's an awful lot of opportunity there as well. Um, I've mentioned skills for the future. There's a lot of noise about greener skills. And as someone pointed out to me, we all have greener skills because we're all working towards a greener future. But there's a lot of work going on to establish what these greener skills are. But initially, and some of the, the, the skills that are being um, identified by manufacturers now that are currently in demand, are digital skills, understanding data, using data to make quality improvements, to save money, to improve processes, environmental sustainability and the drive towards net zero is driving a, a huge um, raft of new um, 
types of jobs and new skills required as well. And a lot of jobs that will probably exist in a few years time don't cur currently exist. And I've also mentioned AI and robotics as well. And we really do need to attract the best talent into our industry through a pipeline. So we are hoping that through some of your Food for Thought projects, you will be promoting careers, you'll be making links to food manufacturing and focusing on STEM skills as well. So next slide, please, Lorna. So what do we actually have that can help you to achieve this? Well, we've got a whole host of resources on our website um, and there are links available to all of these as well. We have numerous um, careers and skills posters. We have careers videos. We've got case studies about people working in the industry. Key messages about working in the industry to make it more attractive and to use a consistent language that gives you lots of stats and information about the industry. Um, we have chemistry videos that we made to support um, the NAT5 and higher chemistry curriculum that use food and drink. We have uh, an online labelling resource there. It's a PowerPoint presentation with notes to help you teach um, people how to read and understand food labels to make good choices. We have numerous wakelets that um, link into other resources as well. We've got food, ca uh, we've got pod foodcasts, maybe that's what we should start calling them. And um, we have numerous podcasts talking about the work that we do as well. And Sarah also referenced the Good Food Champions portal, and I'm going to put the links onto that after I finish speaking. Um, the Good Food Champions portal is um, a resource that ourselves, Rate, Quality Meat Scotland, um, and other food education partners have joined together to develop. Um, it's a platform that you can register to access. It has teaching resources about all aspects of food, STEM and sustainability. It's got quizzes, it's got resources, it's got teaching materials and we're constantly adding to it as well. We're also running a number of webinars as well that you might want to sign up for and they're also um, available to view on that website as well. And Lauren is hurrying me up here as well. And just a final um, point on that is on our DYW partnership with um, the Developing Young Workforce, there's DYW Flix, um, and there's a lot of resource on there as well. There's science in the classroom, there's inside industry, and in fact, there'll be new videos going up tomorrow that we finished filming today, which focus very highly on inside industry. So Dean Shortbread and Matthew Alger, the coffee roasters, and there's lots of information about sustainability and careers. And I'm going to finish now, Lorna, because you're hurrying me on. So I was nearly on time, and thank you very much. <laughs> That was brilliant, Moira. I am so impressed you managed to get through all of that. That was brilliant. And actually, it was an absolute accident. I didn't mean to, <laughs> to push that on. <laughs> I thought you were doing a brilliant job at keeping to time. So thank you so much for that, Moira. Um, and again, I really can see a lot of uh, new supports and new resources since I've been involved in um, in the food education side of it within um, with, with food education. So from both of you already. So without further ado, thanks again, Moira. I'm going to pass over to Alex. Alex from Quality Meet Scotland, who's going to give us the whistle stop tour around the resources available there. So over to you, Alex. Thanks very much, Lorna. And whistle stop tour it is today. I hope you're uh, keeping notes because we are moving at quite a pace. So I'm Alex Ritchie, one of the health and education managers from Quality Meet Scotland. For those of you that don't know, Quality Meat Scotland is the public body responsible for the Scottish red meat sector. I work alongside Jennifer Robertson, who some of you may have met before. Jennifer's actually on the call. Oh, she's put a wee comment there and she's going to be um, putting some of the links that I mentioned up in the chat, which is really helpful. So at Quality Meat Scotland, the health and education team can help you in many different ways. We really focus on the farm to fork journey, and that's really centered around the red meat food system. So if any of the projects that you're involved in with Food for Thought, if any of them are connected to red meat in, in any way, then please get in touch and we can certainly discuss how we can support your project um, and tailor our provision to what you're doing. So generally what we would normally do on a day to day basis would be going into school and providing classroom talks, cookery demonstrations and cook alongs. Obviously, with COVID the way it is at the moment, we're not doing that at the moment. But like Sarah, we're hoping to get back into schools as soon as we are allowed. Um, we are able to offer online education sessions if required. So again, just get in touch. Um, Jennifer's put the, the contact details there if you need to get in touch with us to, to um, arrange any of them. That would be great. We have our meat voucher scheme, which is for all secondary schools in Scotland. That is actually available for sign up now. And I'll um, ask Jennifer if she can just pop the, the link in there for anyone that's not signed up. 
unfortunately it's just for secondary schools so we don't offer that to primary schools at the moment um, and it's up to £180 that's dependent on the school role. Like Sarah and Moira have both mentioned, teacher training is something that we um, are really passionate about at QMS and we do most of that through the Good Food Champions Forum um, and we've got the webinars that have been mentioned and I think all the information in there is in the chat. We also can tailor sessions, so if it's something particularly related to the red meat industry and um, we've got a lot of interest in sustainability with, with livestock at the moment, so if there is something that you would like more information on, if it's a particular cohort or some teachers that are involved with, with the project, then please get in touch and we can tailor that even if it's to a small number of teachers. Career su support, this is something that we can help with and um, we can source industry contacts or support and we have a poster that we created with FDF Scotland as well just showing the, the red meat career journey. The majority of our resources are targeted at secondary school. We have got some of our resources that are at primary level and we are looking at developing more of them in the future but at the moment we mainly focus on secondary school. The resources that we have are wide ranging. We've got videos, posters, recipe books, um, and we've also got a resource that Jennifer and I developed over lockdown, which is called Farming Footsteps. And I'm just going to talk about that next. If you go to the next slide, please, Marna. So Farming Footsteps, as mentioned, was developed over lockdown and really it was just somewhere that we wanted a one stop shop for all the information that you needed about the red meat food system in Scotland. So it's fully interactive and it's been designed to support the curriculum for excellence and it can be taught digitally in the school or at home and it can be used on a desktop or on mobile phones. The, the idea of this resource is to look at the food journey. So it's starting at the beginning from farm and that's exploring farming of cattle, sheep and pigs. And then we move on to field, which is sustainability and the environment. And then we've got to food production, which is discussing food production, safety, packaging and careers. And then we've got to health, which is looking at the role of red meat in a healthy, balanced diet. And then finally, we've got to fork, which is looking at preparing and cooking with red meat. Each of these lessons has a downloadable lesson plan for teachers. There are presentations, interactive tools and games. Um, we've got a game for almost each section now, um, which can be used in the classroom or again as to consolidate, consolidate learning as homework. We've got editable worksheets and there's quizzes on each of the lessons as well. There is also video and links, so that links to some of the resources um, from our other partners and also just some, some useful links that will help develop your knowledge and pupils' knowledge as well. So there's also a focus on some STEM subjects and we've had cross-curricular support from this. So we, we really designed it predominantly. We've worked with food educators, home economics, health and food technology in the past. But as we've developed these resources, we've had um, geography teachers, rural skills and environmental science teachers who have found the resource particularly useful. Um, particularly that second lesson, the two field lesson, which is really looking at sustainability and, and the environment, which, as you're all aware, is very prominent at the moment. Next slide, please, Lorna. And my final slide of today is just to tell you about an uh, interactive res resource that we're developing at the moment, which is called Mission Sustain. And it's just really in that vein of providing resources that can help support the education of sustainable food production. So this it's not live yet. We're in the final stages of testing, so it will be out um, within the next couple of weeks. And if you it's going to sit within Farming Food Steps. So I would really urge you to to visit Farming Food Steps, familiarise yourself with it and keep an eye. We'll keep updated and we will we'll, we'll add new content as, as much as we can. So the, the idea of this game is that pupils will be able to walk in the shoes of the farmers. So they get to manage virtually manage a farm um, they have to make decisions and there's decisions, challenges and opportunities. And each of these has two options. The farmers need to make the farmers, the pupils as farmers need to make a decision and they will be awarded or deducted points for environmental, economic and social sustainability. This is something that we are quite passionate about because I think the economic and social sustainability is often neglected in um, food education and it is a, obviously a really important aspect and it's something that we really want to instill in the education of, of, of farming. So the challenges have been created by industry experts and they're based on real life farming examples and 
really want to highlight the complexity of the issues faced by livestock farmers on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, as we mentioned previously, this can be used in the class or can be used as homework and is, is suitable for desktop and phone. Um, one of the things I've not mentioned on the slide is um, a newsletter. So we have a, a term lane newsletter and we have all our updates that go on to that. And I'm just dropping all these things into Jen without any warning. If you could find the, the link for that and add it as well, that would be great. And Jen's also put the contact for our Twitter page so you can follow us there and all the updates will be there. Um, if there's any questions, then we can get them at the end. And uh, I would urge you to, to visit Farming Footsteps and you've got our email address there if, if you want to discuss anything further. So thank you very much for inviting us along to speak today and I hope you find some of our resources useful. Thank you, Lorna. That's great. Thanks, Alex. Again, some fantastic resources available uh, for schools to be able to, to use and, and link in with you um, as part of, of food education, uh, the, their food education experience. Fantastic. A lot of new resources in there. You've been clearly been busy over lockdown, so thank you so much for that. Very much appreciated. And last but by no means least, I am going to hand over to Ian Clooney from Zero Waste Scotland, who's going to give us the, the last and final whistle stop tour um, of one of the food education partners um, in Scotland. So over to you, Ian. Thanks. Thanks so much, Lorna. Um, grand job with the three ahead of me, so I'll try and keep up the great work. Um, so continuing the theme of whistle, whistle stop tours, I'm just going to take you on a wee journey around food waste. Um, starting at global, then looking at Europe, and then coming down to the Scottish element of that. So SCD goal 12.3 states that the world needs to reduce food waste by 50% by 2030. To put it into context, um, the world, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is the th if food waste was a country, it would be the third biggest emitter of carbon on the planet behind China and the USA. So quite horrific. It's also three times more um, impactful than plastics. So food waste is the, the thing um, that we should be targeting. We've heard a lot about uh, sustainability. We've heard a lot about net zero and the move toward net zero. The quickest and one of the most impactful things we can do, the most impactful, I beg your pardon, thing we can do is reduce our food waste. So Zero Waste Scotland is leading on Scotland's target. We sit on the EU platform for food waste and food reduction. And Scotland set a target in 2016 of reducing our food waste by 2025 by 33%. At that point, it was a world leading target. Many other countries have now set their own targets, but we have a challenge on our hands as a country to achieve that target. We need to do more, we need to do bigger, better and faster. So I'm just going to talk through some of the things that we're offering uh, education across Scotland to try and support that task and try and deliver on Scotland's target. So as it highlights, we're launched the Food Waste Reduction Action Plan in 2019, setting out measures in education. If you read that document, uh, you will find education littered throughout it. It's talking about interacting with the young people of Scotland all the way through to higher education as well, to ensure that we um, deliver on that target of 33% food waste reduction. So highlighted, as we say in that statement, supporting the integration of food waste prevention into relevant aspects of the national curriculum. Next slide, please. So lessons in food waste, as it's highlighting the bullet points is about empowering children from primary to senior school with the knowledge and skills to tackle food waste and the designed as it is to, tack, to fit into the Scottish national school curriculum. There are specific lessons in literacy, science, maths, religious, moral education, home economics. So teachers can pick up the pack that I'll touch on in a second. The children are highlighting it there and holding it up at their launch. And also we have the Waste Warriors. So the blue bib you see uh, the children in the, the photograph is the Waste Warriors pack. So practical things that a school can engage with to tackle food waste and reduce the carbon impact. So next slide, please. So the education pack was uh, developed a number of years ago uh, in association with the Love Food Hate Waste brand. You'll see that branding across a lot of retail settings, a lot of the large retailers and Moira's um, members, obviously the food manufacturers, will utilise that branding on pack to encourage the right behaviours. And that's what we're talking about here, behaviour change to ensure that food waste is reduced. So we do love, food, love our food and not waste it. So you'll see it's a whole school approach. It's divided into sections uh, and there'll be a link at the end and we'll put that on the chat where you can download that education pack. There has been over 10,000 views of that page and many thousands of downloads of the pack as well. We've uh, seek, we've sought out even, uh, views. And during a review a couple of years ago, we've tidied, we've developed, we've improved, we've enhanced, whatever words you want to use, 
that education pack so it's hopefully even more uh, usable, user friendly and, and impactful in the classroom to tackle food waste throughout the whole school. Next slide, please. So what are the, some of the practical things that we're doing? Zero Waste Scotland's buddied up with uh, Glasgow City Council and a number of schools across Glasgow where we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are tackling the actions that are set out in Glasgow's circular route map, the Glasgow City Food Plan, and obviously in our own Scottish Food Waste Reduction Action Plan. So we're budding up with a number of schools across Glasgow where we're looking to establish a baseline of the food that's being wasted in the dining hall at lunchtime. There's no point in trying to jump in and take action until you understand the size of the prize, you, if you, until you understand your baseline, until you understand the size of the issues. So we're encouraging schools to set a baseline, understand the size of the prize, the size of uh, the issue at stake. We're then delivering learner-led campaigns and interventions based on the insights that that baseline measurement gives us. So that's throughout September, October. We're holding sessions with schools and with teachers. And then we're looking through October and November to start taking that measurement and baseline. Moving into early next year, we take the action and we determine the best interventions at that stage. So buddying up both in dining hall experience and challenges, so working with caterers in the in the in the in the, in the dining hall, I beg your pardon, and also in the classroom. So ensuring that we get a whole school approach as opposed to dividing what happens in dining hall happens in dining hall and what happens in the classroom is something separate. These are completely behind. And as I would say, they are completely combined uh, that we're looking at behaviour change. So we're looking at change of behaviour through the whole school. And that eventually, as we say, we submit a further measurement in March, April next year. And then we're looking at an event in April, May next year, towards the end of the school year, where there was a celebration event. And then a wider dissemination, looking across Scotland, of the behaviours that we can tackle and use as a, an education partners and all the people in this call and more to spread this word across Scotland about the actions that will tackle food waste across Scotland schools. Next slide, please. So just looking at a, a case study, St Bridget's Primary. This was a, a case study of the Waste Warriors pack that I touched on earlier. So this was practical tools that we provided the school, the primary school in this case. It's bibs, it's tongs, it's gloves, it's bins, it's all of the basic stuff of measuring uh, utensils. So we understand back to the size of the prize by engaging the young people, the impact is tremendous. It just is transformational in respect of rather than adults trying to tackle this and maybe just teaching in the classroom or maybe just speaking to the caterers in the dining hall, we're actually engaging with the young people and the, and the difference is enormous. As you see, their role is to encourage pupils to eat their lunch, to share it with a buddy, to have a clean plate, challenge each other to have a clean plate and the pictures of clean plate demonstrated achievements. So it was really impactful and also spread out looking into the no plastic straws, fruit only snacks, leftover water given to plants. It really started the juices flowing of children getting imaginative about what else they could do if they couldn't finish the dinner, if they couldn't finish that water, what could they do with that? So it was really very impressive. And part of what we'll be doing over the next couple of months ahead of the next financial year is coming out to people uh, like on this call and across Scotland to look how we can develop and roll out that Waste Warriors kit even further to ensure that we're again delivering on that Scottish target of 33% food waste reduction. Last slide, please. Oh, and that was just where the resources are. So again, I'll put them in the chat and I'd welcome any feedback at all on the pack once you're there. Uh, we have dedicated uh, resources, as I say, that pack that's there and the Waste Warriors. Uh, and I look forward to any questions. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much, Ian. Lots of information in there as well um, for our colleagues joining us on the call and for those who will be watching the recording later as well. Um, I think you did really well, the four of you, I have to say, to make that through the session in the given time. I'm super impressed with the amount of information you were able to share during that time. Now, I've not seen any questions coming up in the, the chat so far. If anybody does have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in there. But uh, while we're waiting for questions to come through, I'd just like to, I'm very conscious of time, um, say a massive thank you to our food education support partners from across Scotland uh, for giving up their time today. 
and sharing the work that they do um, in Scottish schools. And hopefully that's an opportunity for you to engage with them uh, further at um, uh, another time um, so that you can hopefully gain their expertise in the work that you're doing in food education in your own schools. So a massive thank you to our presenters this afternoon. And if there's no further questions, um, I'm happy to close the session for this afternoon. And many, many thanks to those of you who were able to make it to join us for this afternoon. So thanks again.